So we got five classes, 30 kids in each class, five days a week. That's a total of, that's a total of 750 assignments. How are we supposed to keep track of all these assignments? Sometimes it's so much, I just wanna throw my hands up in the air. In this video, I'm gonna break down my organizational system on how I keep track of all of these assignments and how by doing that, it helps me avoid all of that stress. But first, let's play that intro. I have the luxury of teaching for 19 years now and I repeat many of the assignments I did the previous year. So my first advice for brand new teachers is this, create some sort of filing system, some sort of organizational system where you keep track of your worksheets, keep track of your lessons and put them in the filing cabinet. So then when the next year comes, you don't have to reinvent everything. You can just go see what you did the previous year and pull that back out again. So the first thing you gotta do, once again, is create some sort of organization system where you can keep track of all the assignments that you do throughout the year. I do my best to always be at least one week ahead of schedule. I have one week entirely planned out, meaning that I know exactly what I'm doing and as well as having all my copies prepared. Because the last thing you want to do is have to worry about making copies right before your class period and then that copy machine is broken. I'm gonna fix my own damn copy machine. So once you have your copies all made out for that week, well, you want to find some place to store them at. For me, I store all my copies in my podium, or most of my copies I store in my podium, ready to go. So that way, all I have to do is quickly pull them out each day as I get teach that new material. Now this is where it gets good. You have to have some sort of system in place where you are able to collect all the papers that you pass out. Now there's no right or wrong way of doing it and you gotta find out what works best for you. For me, what works best is on the way out of class, uh, so I teach bell to bell, meaning that kids are doing something from the moment they walk in to the moment they leave. And so kids will actually turn assignments into me as they are leaving the class, they'll put them in the bin as they're leaving. And so all I quickly have to do is once the students leave is I collect that work, I put it in their folder, uh, whatever period they are, I put it in their folder, and then I put that folder behind my desk. By collecting the work at the very end of the class, this avoids all that transition period of where I'm trying to collect work. And of course, in that any kind of transition period, you always have the possibility of things kind of going sour. So this avoids all of that. Now comes a moment we've all been waiting for, grading papers. All right, kids, I finished grading your papers. Now, since the majority of my assignments are based upon not necessarily testing for a certain skill, but whether to make sure the students have the information, I'm able to actually have a lot of my students grade their own work. And so, usually before students will turn in the assignment to me, let's say for example it's notes, they will grade how many points they earned on those notes. And then, I once again, I collect them, they're behind my desk, and then when uh, other assignments come up and some students are ahead of everybody else, I might ask them if they would like to do some grading for me, and then all students would do, would recount the points that the original student did, and that's kind of a way of checks and balances. So I, for the most part, um, I would say 70% of my assignments, I do not grade personally. Students grade them themselves, and then I'll have a student recount those points just to make sure that it is accurate. And once the students verify the points for the assignment, I then put it into the computer, and then we're on to our next step of passing the papers back to the students. Once again, I use my students' help for this. So the students that have completed the assignments or ahead of the assignments in the other ones, I'll basically ask them, would you like to pass back some papers? And of course, almost everybody says yes, they would like to do that. And so while other students are working their assignments, uh, the ones that are already done, they will pass back papers. And then my job, of course, is just to facilitate and monitor the classroom. The last piece of the puzzle is having something to put in place that you're able to collect work from students that don't turn it in with everybody else. So for example, let's say a student was absent. And so the next day they turn the work in. Of course, it won't be collected like the other ones would. And so what I do is I have a certain spot that they turn that into. I call it my end bin. So let's say a student was absent or maybe they did extra credit. What they'll do, they don't bring it to me directly or even let me know they're turned in. All I do is put it in the end bin. And then sometime throughout that period or even towards the end of class or even when class is over, I'll take work from my end bin and I'll put it in a folder uh, organized by the different periods. And then later on that day, or if there's time in class or later that day, I'll go through those folders and I'll quickly update the grades or quickly update whatever I need to update regarding that. And so that is a way I'm able to collect work that is beyond the scope of the other assignments being turned in. I hope you found this helpful. If you want other tips and tricks of the trade, just click on one of the links above here. And remember, stay zesty.